we want to find limit as n is approaching infinity of i sub n, where i sub 1 is integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus square root of x dx, and i sub 2 is going to be integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus square root of x dx. Ooh. Okay. Are we brave enough to write down i sub 3? Are we brave enough to write down the next sequence, integral from 0 to 1 of dx, and now we are going to have 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus square root of x. We have succeeded. And you are going to do it on and on and on and on and on. So i sub 4, i sub 5, i sub 6. And continue evaluating each of the integrals. And we want to find what the limit is when you do it so many times and approaching infinity. Okay. Whew. <laughs> well, that's fun and all. Okay. So there's, maybe we can try to relate the integral somehow, but in the end, you guys are going to have to know one thing at the end if you want to figure this question out. So let me just go to a new page and think about Fibonacci sequence before I return to integral. And you may say, what am I doing? Why am I talking about Fibonacci sequence that does not have anything to do with the integral? And you would be very surprised pleasantly surprised very soon. But I want to talk about Fibonacci sequence before we actually work on the integral. And Fibonacci sequence is whenever you have one term, so a sub n, and you have the next term, a sub n plus 1, and then as of 2, next term, a sub n plus 2. The most famous Fibonacci sequence is the one that starts with 1, 1. Then you're going to get 2 by adding up these two, and the next term is going to be 1 plus 2 or 3. Next term is going to be 5, 2 plus 3, then it's going to be 8, 13, 21, and so on. So that's, the, that's a very famous Fibonacci sequence. But it does not have to start with 1, 1. It can start with 5, 7, and we can continue. 5, 7, 12, 19, 31, 50, and so on. It can start with 0 0.1, 0 0.7, then you're going to say 0 0.8, 1.5, 2.3, and you're going to continue on. So all of these are Fibonacci sequence, where some nth term, so that's the nth term, where the nth term, plus n plus first term is going to be n plus second term in the sequence. And I want to examine some famous, so maybe you guys do not know, but when you get to, when you, if you're very exper experienced with Fibonacci sequence, you are going to know its close relationship, its very close relationship with golden ratio. Golden ratio, the ratio that seems to pop up many, many times in our universe, in our bodies and plants and animals and seashells. And they, it, some people think it, we tend to feel that golden ratio is very beautiful. Anyway, golden ratio and Fibonacci have an intimate relationship as we are about to find out. So let me show you what the relationship is really fast. Then we are going to go back to our integral. When you have a Fibonacci sequence, so let's say a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and so on. So a sub 1 and a sub 2 can be 1, 1, or 5, 7, 0 0.1, 0 0.7. And you're going to continue going on with the Fibonacci sequence. And let's say you're looking at the ratio. Let's say you're looking at the ratio between the terms. Ratio between the terms in the Fibonacci sequence. So by ratio between the terms, I'm asking you a sub 2 over a sub 1, a sub 3 over a sub 2, a sub 4 over a sub 3, and so on. So in the case of 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, I'm talking about this ratio, 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 5 over 3, 8 over 5, and so on. And what I'm going to ask you is, to what is the limit? What is the limit as n is approaching infinity, as you're doing it many, 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 many times, of a sub n plus 1, 
over a sub n. So what I'm saying is if you continue doing this ratio, well, in the case for 1, 1, 2, 3, it doesn't have to start with 1, 1. It should work for every single Fibonacci sequence. So you can either start with 1, 1, 5, 7, 0 0.1, 0 0.7. It does not matter. If you take any Fibonacci sequence and you try finding the ratio between the terms, what is this ratio going to tend to as you're looking at infinite, as you're looking at this n increasing without bound whenever you what is this what is the limit i should say of the ratio as you're doing it many 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 times and the answer is this ratio is called the golden ratio that it is actually equal to golden ratio and how do you find the value of golden ratio well golden ratio can be found by examining this in fact so let me write down this limit Limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Well, a sub n plus 1 is going to be a sub n plus a sub n minus 1. Because to get n plus first term, you're going to add up the nth term and n minus first term. So a sub n plus 1 is a sub n plus a sub n minus 1. And you're dividing by a sub n. So that's going to be limit of 1 plus a sub n minus 1 over a sub n. I'm just dividing it to each of them. And... What is this? Well, you have a limit of 1, so that's just going to be 1, and you have limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n minus 1 over a sub n. And realize this part, this limit is equal to 1 over the golden ratio. And you may say, why is it 1 over the golden ratio? So let's think about it. So golden ratio, as we defined it, is limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, where you have one term in the Fibonacci sequence, you have a term and you have the term next to it. So next term and you're finding this ratio. And realize it doesn't have to be n plus 1 and n. You can say n is approaching infinity and a sub n over a sub n minus 1. Or limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 100 over a sub n plus 99. The only constraint we have is that this term has to be the next term from this one. So we know we can also treat phi as limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over a sub n minus 1 and realize that this ratio it's just flipping what we used to have. So you're just flipping it so that's going to be 1 over phi. So that's telling you phi is equal to 1 plus 1 over phi. Before I go on, I want to point out one thing. You may argue that how do we know? How do we know this limit exists? How do we know there has to be a limit? Of course, if there is a limit, everything we're doing is valid and there is nothing wrong with doing all of these. But how do we know this exists? And proving that for Fibonacci, limit between the ratio exists, that's more cumbersome and that's going to take some time. So I'm not going to get to that in this video. In this video, let's assume, let's assume that limit does exist. You can actually prove it. Uh, maybe I'm going to do it in the, some future video. Anyway. So we know golden ratio phi is equal to 1 plus 1 over phi. So we know phi squared is equal to phi plus 1, just multiplying by phi. Or phi squared minus phi minus 1 is equal to 0. And now we can find the value of golden ratio using the, using the quadratic formula. So that's going to be negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, so minus 4 times negative 1, over 2. And that's going to be 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. And are we going to take plus or minus? Well, we are going to take plus. Because the ratio between the terms is going to be positive as n is approaching infinity. You are going to get positive ratio. So you want your phi to be positive. And since square root of 5 is more than 1, you want to disregard minus square root of 5. So we have found the golden ratio. It's 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. So let me recap really fast and get back to integral as quickly as possible. So we know the ratio between the successive terms in Fibonacci sequence tends to golden ratio, which is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And we have just gotten it by assuming that a sub n plus a sub n minus 1 gets you a sub n plus 1. Realize that Fibonacci sequence does not have to start with 1, 1. It can start with 5, 7. It can start with 0 0.1, 0 0.7. It doesn't matter. You're still going to have this relationship between Fibonacci and golden ratio. Okay, since I pointed that out, now let's get back to this integral. 
So now let's try to evaluate this. So i sub 1, so instead of looking at the entire integral, I'm going to look at the expression inside. I'm going to look at this crazy fraction, crazy expanding fraction we have going on. So for the first one, our fraction is 1 over 1 plus square root of x. Easy as we're as easy as it's going to get. For the second one, you're going to get 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus square root of x. An easy way of simplifying this one is by multiplying by 1 plus square root of x to both top and bottom. So we don't have this complex fraction. And you're going to get 1 plus square root of x over 1 plus square root of x plus 1, just distributing this 1 plus square root of x, just multiply it by 1, and when you multiply it to this fraction, these are going to cancel out, that was the entire point of multiplying by that, and you're going to get 1 plus square root of x over 2 plus square root of x. So that's the first one, that's the second one. Let's continue. For the third one, you're going to get this fraction, 1 over 1 plus, I'm not going to say it one more time, but you have 1 plus this complex fraction and realize 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus square root of x, that was the expression we had for the second term. So we know these two are the same thing. So we know we have 1 plus square root of x over 2 plus square root of x. An easy way of simplifying this is by multiplying by 2 plus square root of x, 2 plus square root of x to top and bottom. And we are going to get 2 plus square root of x over 2 plus square root of x plus 1 plus square root of x, which is 2 plus square root of x over 3 plus 2 times square root of x. Do you guys see it? There is something very interesting going on. Maybe we want to do it one more time. Let's do it one more time and see if you guys see it. Some of you may have already seen it. Then you're going to get 1 plus, 1 plus, now you're going to have this quantity. So that's going to be 2 plus square root of x over 3 plus 2 times square root of x, multiplying by 3 times 3 plus 2 times square root of x to top and bottom is going to get you 3 plus 2 times square root of x divided by 3 plus 2 times square root of x plus 2 plus square root of x, which is 3 plus 2 times square root of x over 5 plus 3 times square root of x. Let me pause. And I want you guys to look at each of these fractions and see if you guys can find a pattern. Okay, so let me, now let me write it like this. 1, 1 plus square root of x. So you have 1 divided by 1 plus square root of x. Then you have 1 plus square root of x divided by 2 plus square root of x. Then you have 2 plus square root of x divided by 3 plus 2 times square root of x. Then you have 3 plus 2 times square root of x divided by 5 plus 3 times square root of x. And this is going to continue. What is this? What is this sequence? It is Fibonacci. You have a Fibonacci sequence hidden inside this integral. Fibonacci sequence. Realize that 1 plus 1 plus square root of x is going to get you this thing. Adding this to get you this thing. Adding this to get you this thing. And rightfully so, because when you look inside a fraction, you see how it's getting simplified. 1 plus square root of x plus 1 is getting you 2 plus square root of x. 2 plus square root of x plus 1 plus square root of x is getting you 3 plus 2 times square root of x. So this Fibonacci sequence is inherent inside the integrand. So, what is that telling you? Well, realize that you're also looking at the ratio of the terms in the Fibonacci sequence. You have 1 over 1 plus square root of x, then you have 1 plus square root of x over 2 plus square root of x, then you have this thing over this thing, this thing over this thing. And realize you are going all the way to infinity. You want your the ratio to go all the way to the ratio of infinity. <laughs> terms. So as n is approaching infinity, you're looking at the ratio between the terms in Fibonacci sequence as n is approaching infinity. And realize that you're for the for the golden ratio, when we got the golden ratio, you are get doing a sub n plus 1 over a sub n as limit as n is approaching infinity. In that case, we were doing in this case you're doing 1 over 1 plus square root of x, then 1 plus square root of x over 2 plus square root of x, then 2 plus square root of x 
over 3 plus 2 times square root of x. For the golden ratio, we are doing it backwards. We are doing a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. In that case, you are doing something like this. 1 plus square root of x over 1, then 2 plus square root of x over 1 plus square root of x, and 3 plus 2 times square root of x over 2 plus square root of x. So in our case, you are basically flipping the golden ratio, and you also have this limit going on. Limit as n is approaching infinity. So basically, what do we have inside this integral? What is this going to be? That is going to be integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over the golden ratio dx. That's it. Because what is the what is the fraction inside tending to? It's tending to the ratio between between the terms in Fibonacci sequence, but in just backwards manner. You're just flipping a sub n plus one and a sub n. So that's going to be one over five when you take the limit. And what is this going to be? Well, one of five is just a constant. So it's going to be one of one over five times x from zero to one, which is simply one over five. So we only have to find one over five. And our phi, so the answer to this is going to be 1 over phi. And phi is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. So 1 over phi is going to be 2 over square root of 5 plus 1. And let's multiply by square root of 5 minus 1 divided by square root of 5 minus 1. To rationalize this, you're going to have 2 times square root of 5 minus 1 over 5 minus 1 which is 4, so and the, you have 2 up top, so you can divide it out to get a 2 below, because you have a 4 here, so 2 and 4 are going to cancel, leaving 2 at the bottom. So we have it. The answer is simply 1 over 5, or square root of 5 minus 1 over 2. So the answer to this question is simply 1 over the golden ratio, or square root of 5 minus 1 over 2.